All right, lessons four and uh, three and four revolve around intervals of increase and decrease. Then this other thing called even and odd functions, which we'll get to. But you need to know these. This is intuitive, so don't worry. A function is increasing if as x goes up, so does y. What I mean by that is if you move your pencil along the graph from left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right, as long as your pen is moving upward, you're increasing. Whereas if your pen is moving downward, left to right, left to right, left to right, but my pen has to move downward in order to get there, the function's decreasing. This example here, this parabola, if I move my pen from left to right, I'm going upward, 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 upward until about here. What that means is that I am increasing on the whole graph up to 2. I, I like saying x is less than 2. Everywhere to the left of 2, this function is increasing because as you move left to right, your pen has to move upward. On the other side of 2, though, as I move left to right, my pen goes downward. So we say the function is decreasing on x is greater than 2. These are just intervals the same way we have interval notation for domain and range. If you remember that, from well, those aren't intervals. These are intervals. But we're using that same notation to say when functions are increasing and decreasing. Whether or not a function's increasing or decreasing really matters more in grade 12 calculus than advanced functions, but it's here because it is a property of some of the functions we're going to study. Now, that was an easy one. That was a parabola. Here is a sine wave. You know sine waves. You did these last year. You've got your x-axis in degrees. You've got your y-axis from negative 1 to positive 1. Now, I'm going to start over here. Now, this graph starts at what, 270? It's not shown there, but that is 270 on the negative 270 on the x-axis. Now, starting here, moving left to right, I'm going down, 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 until I get here. So, my function is decreasing on the interval negative 270 all the way up to negative 90. Starting at negative 90, I'm going up and up and up and up and up and up. But then at positive 90, I go down, 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 up to 270. So not only is this interval an interval of decrease, but this function is also decreasing from positive 90 up to positive 270. Then I go up and up and up and up and up and up. And once I get to 450 degrees, I'm going down and down and down and down and down and down and down again. I'm decreasing from x equals 450 all the way up to x equals 630. From 450 all the way up to 630. You can see how complicated this gets in terms of writing these, but it's the same formula every time. Your lower number goes here, your higher number goes here, and you're figuring out where your graph is going downward as you move from left to right. Now, once we get to 630, it looks like it tails up a bit. We'll figure that out later. Okay, now where is this function increasing? Well, decreasing, because it's going down, increasing here. It's increasing, in this case, from negative 90 all the way up to positive 90. Negative 90, up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Check. Down, 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 down. And then at 270, it's going upward again. Positive 270 to positive 450 is another interval of decrease. Ha, huh. I mean increase, because we were heading upwards. 
270 to 450. And then at 450, it's decreasing again. We already made a note of that up until 630. And then from 630 up until, I don't even know what that is. You think it's like 670 or something? From 630 up to 670, there's probably an official number for that there. But I'm just gonna draw a little arrow and assume that it stops at 670. From 630, less than x, less than 670, it's also increasing. Note, a function can't be increasing and decreasing at the same time because it's either going down or it's going up and there's no in-between. If there was an in-between, it would be these points, the negative 90, the 90, the 270, the 450, the numbers that cause these, like at the edges of these intervals. At these points, the function isn't increasing or decreasing. It's not both. We say it's neither increasing or decreasing. You don't necessarily have to worry about that. You just have to be able to tell people when it's decreasing and when it's increasing. And again, you're using the interval notation. Deal? Deal. All right. The last thing for section three is the difference between an even and an odd function. Now, this, these words can be a little confusing. I don't want you thinking about even and odd in terms of the numbers themselves, although they are slightly related. A function or a graph or an equation is even if the graph is perfectly symmetrical, exactly the same on either side of the y-axis. Again, it has to be exactly the same on both sides. It'll look like the y-axis is a mirror. I have some examples of functions on this page. I'm going to zoom out with my camera here so you can see them all at once. Now, which of these are perfectly symmetrical around the y-axis? Here, no matter if I'm on the left or the right, this graph is exactly the same. This here is an even function because the y-axis is acting like a mirror. Whatever's on the left is also exactly the same as what's on the right. That is not the case here. On the left side of the x-axis, we're going downward. On the right side of the y-axis, we're going upward. It is not an even function. This is also not because this isn't a mirror along this line here. This isn't a mirror, like these aren't the same. This isn't a mirror, because they're not the same. This is a mirror, because it is exactly the same on either side. Again, it's symmetrical about the y-axis, so this is an even function. This isn't an even function, because this y-axis is not a mirror. After all, the function doesn't even exist over there. This isn't a mirror. That's not a mirror. These are the only two even functions we have. And again, it has to be exactly the same on either side of the y-axis. Huh, I lied. I'm watching through my camera and these were cut off. My y-axis here is not a mirror because it goes downward to the right and upward to the left. These humps are in opposite directions. But here on either side of the y-axis, it is the same. Starts at one and it's going downward. Now the coast curve continues infinitely in both directions and it's symmetrical. Coast happens to also be called an even function. And again, there's no even number here for you to just like, this does, has nothing to do with the fact that it's even numbers. A function is just even if it's symmetrical like that. Deal? Now, what that practically means is that it doesn't really matter if you're plugging in a positive value of x or a negative value of x. An example of that is this even function here. This is y equals x squared. If I plugged in positive 3 for x, 3 squared is 9. If I plugged in negative 3, negative 3 squared is also 9. The the value of y that we get out has nothing to do with the sign on x. That's what makes something an even function. But that might be a little, that might even be a little ahead of ourselves. 
All I want you to really know is that the even functions are symmetrical, like this one was. Downward, upward, downward, perfectly the same on both sides. An odd function is symmetrical in a different way. We say it's symmetrical about the origin. What this means is that the graphs move in exact opposite directions away from the point zero, zero, or the origin. Now, I'll show you what that looks like practically, because when you see it, you'll know. And then I'll show you a trick based on it, okay? Here's my first example of an odd function. Starting here at zero, zero, no, if we move to the left, we're going downward. And if we move to the right, we're going upward. And it looks like it's exactly the same on both sides. It just happens to be in opposite directions. That's the definition of an odd function. Now, this is exactly the same. If you start at 0, 0, it's actually an asymptote. But then if you move to the left here, you're moving upward. And if you move to the right here, you're moving downward. It's symmetrical around this point here. It's moving in exact opposite directions as you go to the left and the right. This is also an odd function. This is not an odd function because it doesn't even exist to the left. So it can't be in opposite directions. It's not even or odd. This one again, as you move away from zero, zero, this one's going upward, this one's going downward, and it looks like it's the same curve just in opposite directions. So it's an odd function. We already said that's even, it can't be both. Here, our, we're asking if it's symmetrical about zero, zero, remember. The graph doesn't even exist on the, on the left-hand side of the y-axis here. So it's not symmetrical about that point. There's, there isn't anything to be symmetrical with on the left. It's not odd. We agreed it's not even either. And again, as we move away from zero, zero, these are moving in opposite directions. I mean, this one seems to be going downward over this way, and this one's upward, but it's not the same. It's not at the exact same rate. This one's tapering off towards zero. This one's going upwards towards infinity. It's just not symmetrical. There's no mirror plane or any kind of symmetry going on here. It's not an odd function. This one is an odd function, though, in that you start at zero, zero, this side goes up, this side goes down, and it seems to be at the same rate for both. So we'll write odd here as well. Finally, the sine curve, as you move away from zero, zero, this one goes down, then back up. This one goes up, then back down. That sounds opposite to me, so it's an odd function. Now I wanna teach you a little shortcut for how to figure out if something's uh, an odd function. Even is easy, hopefully. Even, hopefully, you can see because it's a mirror plane that's exactly the same on both sides. Odd functions are tougher, but here's my secret. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to zoom in here. Remember how this looks. This is y equals x cubed or whatever. It's going down to the left and upward to the right. Now I'm going to rotate my paper around 180 degrees. I'm just going to flip the paper upside down. Odd functions will look exactly the same upside down as they do right side up, right? Like, remember this? Let's flip it right side up. It's the same thing. Whoop, whoop. Same curve, no matter how you look at it, right side up or upside down. Take a look. We've got a curve in the upper right and lower left. Flip the page upside down it's still upper left and lower right. It's the same no matter if you're looking at the page upside down or right side up. What else was odd? This one, remember this, looks the same as that, odd function. What else is odd? This one, starting at zero, zero, this one goes down to the left, up to the right, flip it upside down, it's still down to the left, up to the right. Odd functions are, I argue, super easy if you know that trick and you have a paper in front of you that you can flip upside down. All right, that's even and odd functions for you. There's algebra that's related to that. 
but we can cover that another time. I'm at 15 minutes. That's my max for YouTube. Take it easy.